um, it doesn't look so convenient. Uh, and most importantly, I never sent um, classified uh, material on my email, and I never received any uh, that was marked classified. 7,000 pages are set to be released from Hillary Clinton's private homebrew server this evening. Now, under intense questioning, the State Department admits that within this latest data dump of emails, about 150 of them will be upgraded to classified status. Now, the agency spokesperson stressed that the information was not marked as classified at the time, although he concedes that, you know, some changes are going to have to be made within the intelligence community. Obviously, there is absolutely no excuse for improperly handling sensitive information. All of these emails resided on a private homebrew mail server that Clinton had set up herself. She controlled it. It was away from the prying eyes of government inspectors and Freedom of Information Act officials. And it includes the 30,000 emails that Hillary Clinton already ordered to be deleted because she said they were personal in nature. Now, obviously, the question here is, would those personal emails include pay to play donations that were made to the Clinton Foundation. Now, let's not forget that while Clinton was steering American foreign policy as the Secretary of State, donations were pouring in to the Clinton Foundation. And this includes a deal that gave the Russians control of one fifth of all uranium production capacity in the United States. The company Uranium One donated $2.35 million to the Clinton Foundation. Those contributions weren't publicly disclosed by the Clintons, despite an agreement that was struck between Hillary and the Obama White House to publicly identify all donors. So could this be a reason why the establishment is throwing Hillary to the wolves? Her sloppiness could expose a lot of other shady business deals. Now, coming up, we're going to look at the life of William Lewis. I'm going to have... Uh from Next News Network, Gary Franchi in on Skype, and we're going to he used to collaborate with William. And we're also going to look at uh, some new developments in the war on drugs. And also, Mark Dice is going to interview people on what they think now that scientists have captured Nessie, should we set her free? It's all that and more on the Infowars Nightly News. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. Hi, I'm Shane Steiner. A lot of you have been following my progress using Supermail Vitality. The last 19 weeks has been an incredible experience. I was feeling a little down and lethargic during the holidays, and none of the supplements that I was taking were doing any good. That's when my longtime friend from high school, Alex Jones, introduced me to Supermail Vitality. I was a little skeptical at first. Not only would I have the energy to work out and go to the gym, but it, it was actually the changes were happening to my body. Uh, a lot more rapidly. My whole mood, my libido, everything had completely changed. The concentrated organic herbs, they stimulate your natural systems to produce the natural hormones that you need. I just really wanted to, to bulk up and hit it hard and I went in for about the first five weeks and was lifting heavy weight and just really hitting it hard and I gained 20 pounds of muscle immediately. Since that, I've decided I was going to lose some weight and slim down. I just changed up my workout a little bit and 35 pounds came off. Folks, this is not a joke. This is not a gimmick. It's real. Super Male Vitality. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. 
Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and cannot be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosylcobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Now, over the weekend, I received a text message from our next guest stating that filmmaker William Lewis had passed away. And if you don't know him, you, you should. He's, he's made over 12 documentaries, worked on a few others, uh, got his career started uh, working on uh, music album covers for people. But we, ha we posted the article, uh, Patriot Filmmaker William Lewis Passes Away. Um, he was best known for his groundbreaking documentaries, including 9-11 In Plain Sight, Washington, You're Fired, and life on the edge of a bubble. We have a lot of uh, articles and um, interviews that he actually came here in studio via Skype if you want to check those out and learn about William Lewis if you don't already know about him. Now, I'm just going to go through his discography really quick, his filmography. Uh, starting in 2004, he released 9-11 In Plain Sight. 2005 was Beyond Treason. 2006, One Nation Under Siege. Uh, 2007, 9-11 Ripple Effect. And then his next three documentaries, I think, are his most powerful. 2008, Washington, You're Fired. 2009, Life on the Edge of a Bubble, a documentary that's still very pertinent today. And then 2009, he worked on Camp FEMA with our next guest, uh, Gary Franchi. Finishing up here, Enemy of the State, uh, Enemy of the State, Camp FEMA Part 2, Don't Tread on Me, Blood of Patriots, Ron Paul Uprising, and Peddling Influence. Now joining us via Skype is Gary Franchi, who collaborated on three projects with uh, William Lewis, Camp FEMA, uh, Camp FEMA Part 2, which is Enemy of the State, and Don't Tread on Me. Uh, he's with uh, nextnewsnetwork.com. Gary, how are you doing today? I'm doing okay, Rob. Thanks for having me, despite the news. Yeah, it is bad news, especially when one of our own uh, comes to pass, passes through the great to the great wide open, however you want to say it. William Lewis is hopefully definitely in a better place at this point. I know he had some health issues recently in the last few years, but describe how you guys got together and your process of making the uh, Camp FEMA documentary series. Well, I was impacted mostly by his film, 9-11 in Plain Sight, One Nation Under Siege, Washington, You're Fired. So when I came up with the concept for Camp FEMA, it was natural for me to start seeking out other filmmakers who, could, who I could collaborate with, and that's how I found William with Sudo's films. And uh, we decided that we needed to make a film that would take a look at the contingency programs, uh, the continuity of government programs in the United States, and put to rest some of the myths and, 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 the, and raise light on realities of the FEMA camps in America. Yeah, that was a, that's a big thing. People say, well, there's no FEMA camps. It's all written in documentation. And we've even uncovered documents since you guys made your films on how they're going to use Social Security numbers to categorize people, how they're going to have PSYOP officers at these camps. I mean, it's getting a lot serious now than it was back then. But even back then, you guys were showing how the Japanese intern camp work. And I think you even interviewed a survivor from uh, back then, back in the 40s, when they were interned by the U.S. government. 
Yeah, we did. That was one of the linchpins of the entire film because we wanted to show people a, an American citizen. That was the whole point. The, the gentleman we interviewed was an American citizen who was interred in a camp that was upheld by the Supreme Court. So we had to lay down that foundation and then do a cross-reference to who the government sees as the enemies today. And of course, we looked at the MIAC report, we looked at a bunch of different, uh, like, you know, the, the, the Southern Poverty Law Center, how all these different groups uh, are targeting Americans simply because, you know, we support the Constitution. Right. And I, I was talking earlier about, uh, you know, they just removed a Jefferson Davis and Woodrow Wilson statue from UT. And, you know, people think like the Civil War started overnight. No, these things are all drawn out. They're long, pl they're long plans that, that have to go into effect. I mean, it, it started years ago when the North started tariffing the South to go in and, and just raise the, the prices on their goods so uh, Southerners would have to pay more, thereby getting all that money that the South was getting from all the crops they were growing. Uh, but, you know, going back in with William Lewis, I mean, what do you think is his most impactful documentary? I think 9-11 In Plain Sight. That was the first film that, you know, my father presented it to me. And I was like, wow, my dad's talking about this. You know, that, that's that's a that, that's a, a game changer right there. Uh, and that film changed a lot of people's lives, opened a lot of lives, uh, people's eyes to the facts and, and the fraud of 9-11. So I think of uh, in the entire body of work, 9-11 In Plain Sight is going to change people's minds about that day. Uh, and then, of course, all his other films, like it's, it's a progression. I mean, the whole catalog is so intense and so powerful that even in William's death, that he's going to have an impact for a very, very long time. Washington, You're Fired, amazing film. One Nation Under Siege, when I saw that movie, I was like, I was so captivated by his work. And I, I mean, the fact that I got to work with the guy on three films covering such amazing topics, FEMA camps, continuity of government, Tenth Amendment, uh, you know, solutions, solutions to all these problems. I mean, don't tread on me. That's what it was all about was the solutions to the problems. So being able to work with William uh, was an honor, an absolute honor. And, you know, you guys, you even told me that you guys were even talking about getting together and doing a uh, Camp FEMA part three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, I already, I scripted the outline for that film. Uh, we started getting the artwork put together and, uh, you know, See, William was having health issues uh, for, for several years. He actually almost died on two different occasions. Uh, and it all, see, the, here's the weird thing. Now, I, I, I spoke to his wife. And when we were filming Don't Tread on Me, William always traveled. He always traveled with a companion, somebody who, who, who could watch his back and make sure everything was going okay. The film topics he covered were always very controversial. Now, when I spoke to his wife, I said, I said Debbie, in the event that people come to me and say, hey, well, was William murdered? How do you want me to address that? Because, of course, that's, that's where a lot of people's minds go. And I know the topic's going to come up. And she said, well, Gary, you should probably know something. And I was like, okay, what, what's going on here? When we were filming Don't Tread on Me, his hotel room was broken into. In the entire time that William was always making films, he always traveled with a companion. Now, when he was filming Don't Tread on Me, he went down to Oklahoma to interview Charles Key. That was the only time that he traveled alone. His hotel room was broken into. Everything was stolen except his camera, his wallet, his laptop, everything. Now, he ended up staying in that, uh, in that hotel room that night. Strangely enough, the security cameras of the hotel room were not working. So immediately after that is when his health started to, to decline. And I don't want to just... What year, I'm sorry up. to jump in, but what year was this about? You know, I, I can't remember the date that we were filming that, that movie, but it was years ago. It was years ago. But his health immediately started to decline after he made that film. And uh, his pancreas started shutting down. He started having severe health issues, and he almost died on two other occasions. So I don't want to jump on the, the, the bandwagon and say he was murdered, but when I spoke to his wife, that was what she raised to me, the, the, the strange coincidence of his health being in decline immediately after that film. I mean, the guy was 47 years old. Yeah, uh, no, he's not, so, not that old, you know, compared to lifespan. And he looked like he was in good health. He, he wasn't overweight. Um, you know, the times he came on the Alex Jones show, he looked in, in great health. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's funny you should say that because one of the first people, when I put out the tweet about your uh, text message that you sent me that William Lewis had passed, uh, one of the first people to get on and reply to that, you know, said, was it natural causes, question mark. 
And that's where I think a lot of people are going to jump because when you touch on this type of information that the government really doesn't want out there, they do not like the fact that people are out here talking about contingency plans to round up American citizens and put them in camps. But like you said, you know, if you guys were going to work on a Camp FEMA Part 3, I think a cornerstone of that is, you know, Hillary Clinton coming out and saying, I think we need fun camps for adults run by you people. She's talking to a group of people who work for Homeland Security. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, well, look, that should look scare what, you. Look at what Chris.